I'm finally at peace. I want you to put all this behind you and find that same peace inside yourself. But I'm doing this because I love you. I love you, too. But life is for living. Take a seat. You have so much to live for. Your husband, your little boy. Keep our memories. Make new ones. Let our new brother take my place. I thought this was what you wanted. I want you to move forward, not backward. I was trying to help you. You blamed me for deserting you. I, I lived with that memory and that guilt for years, and now you want me to forget it just like that? Be the last thing I ever ask of you. Forgive Janet. After what she did to you. To us. Doesn't sound like you, Will. You don't sound like my brother. Cemeteries give me the creeps. Janet, I'm meeting you here. Now, what the hell have you done with my wife? Oh, what a beautiful moon. Oh, it's a lovely night. Brooke? Brooke? Honey, what's the matter? What happened? Are you hurt? Shall I call Joe Martin? Oh, please, darling, speak to me. Tell me what is wrong. Edmund. since five this morning. Okay. Then we'll cuddle. Not tonight. That's what you said last night. You know, I don't have the energy to service cars all day and then you all night. regular programming to bring you this late-breaking bulletin. Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Edmund Gray was killed tonight when his car exploded in the parking lot of Pine Valley Hospital. Repeating, Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Edmund Gray is dead. Eyewitnesses say the initial blast was followed by a second, believed to be the car's gas tank. One thing's certain, Mr. Gray never had a chance. His wife, Dr. Maria Santos Gray, a neurologist at Pine Valley Hospital, was not hurt in the explosion. Pine Valley Police Detective Derek Fry has confirmed that investigators believe a bomb planted in the car was responsible for the deadly blast. Mr. Gray dead. It just doesn't seem possible. Well, the dude on the radio wouldn't say it unless it was so, huh, Grace? But it's still such a shock. It Unexpected, like when my Tony died. Our Tony. Thanks for bringing me over here, Noah. Well, no, I was gonna let you drive, shaking like a paint mixer. Didn't know what else to do except come here. Mr. Merrick loved Edmund. So did Julia. They're gonna need all the help we can give them. We came as soon as we heard. We are so, so sorry. Mr. Gray was a good man.
much, Edmund. Oh, merciful God, please let him know how much I loved him. Maria, right, he knew. You know, anybody who ever saw you together knew that. Yes, the love that you and Edmund had together, that was, that was rare and that was special and just, that kind of love survives. It survives everything. It survives hurt and anger and even death. But I was so petty and mean today at the hospital. You don't understand. It, it, I could have told him that I loved him and... It was, it was so little to give him, and I knew that he wanted to hear it. I knew. But I wouldn't give him satisfaction. What is that? Now Edmund's last memory of me will be of my anger and not of my love. Mr. Gray knew you loved him. And I'm sure he's forgiven you. Now you have to forgive yourself. Grace is right, Marie. Don't doubt that Edmund knew that you loved him. And don't doubt that he knows that now, even in heaven. Mr. Gray's at peace with the Lord, and he'd want you to be at peace, too. Remember the love that you and Edmund had. Remember that, and let that comfort you the way he would if he were here. <gasps> Let me go! Not till you tell me what you've done with Dixie. Nothing, I swear! What are you doing here? Why are you threatening me? Dixie? Dixie, are you here? Ted? Where are you? Ted, I'm over here! Well? Last time, Janet, you stay away from Dixie, or so help me God, I will have you torn yeah. in half. Dixie, you all right? Hi. You okay? What's going on? I, uh, I came looking for you and found her instead. What's she doing here? Minding my own business. She followed you from the rally. I did not. Give me a break. What else would you be doing sitting in a parked car in the middle of a cemetery by yourself if you weren't stalking Dixie? I am not stalking Dixie. Trevor was right to get a restraining order. Maybe we should, too. No, I, I just came to visit Natalie. I saw Dixie's car parked ahead of mine, and I figured she came to pay her respects to Will's grave. So I, I didn't want to cause any trouble. I decided I'd, I'd just wait in the car till Dixie was finished. But I don't understand what you're so upset about. I didn't bother her. Obviously I didn't upset because her. because I got here in time to stop you. You know, there's just no reasoning with some people. I'll just visit Natalie another time. No, no, you're not going anywhere. She tells what you're up to. What was that? I don't know, maybe uh, the wind or a ghost, perhaps. Maybe. Or maybe somebody's here with you. Go back to the car, lock yourself, and I'll be there in five minutes, okay? And leave you with her? I don't think so. Just five minutes. I promise I'll be all right. Park right over there. Please. Okay, five minutes. And if you're not back, I'm going to call the cops. Don't move. Ted, you're just being paranoid. There's no one in the bushes. I told you to stay put. Okay, okay, fine. Go lurking around the bushes. You know, people get arrested for things like that.
alone, folks. Sorry. Rest in peace. A little edgy? No, cemeteries just give me the creeps. I'm not surprised. The man you murdered's five feet that way. I told you I came alone. Now are you satisfied? I'm not gonna be satisfied till there's a law to keep people like you from haunting the scene of your crime. I just want to live here in peace, Dad. Fine. I'll leave my family alone. Justin, they're gone. You can come out now. Justin? Justin? Justin?